Train the muscles, not the joints. Well, welcome back to Natural of the Land Bodybuilding, and uh, today I'm in the garage again. Uh, I don't mind doing vlogs in here, it's kind of fun, you know, just to show you guys some workout stuff and talk about multiple different tips and tricks and whatever, and uh, yeah, and different things that I'm finding with my own training. But right now, outside, uh, we've got massive forest fire crap going on, only three hours away from me, people are being evacuated from their homes and all that stuff, so uh, yeah, so I'm stuck in the garage, i got the fan going, so sorry if you can hear that or whatever, but it's pretty hot outside and at the same time uh, we can't open the windows or anything otherwise you get toxified so yeah here i am in the garage in my own little world talking to you hopefully i don't burn alive you know during the video but yeah we'll, we'll see what happens right we'll see what happens today i'm going to talk to you a little bit about what's more important intensity or volume now uh, a lot of times uh people will split hairs about this kind of stuff and really when I mean volume, I'm talking about workout volume, not weekly volume. Like there's this common sort of thing, guys talk about weekly volume and all that. And I'm sure these are all factors, but honestly, if you take care of the micro, the macro will take care of itself. That's, that's really it. You, you know, so many people, they become too big picture when it comes down to their workout program. They're not, they're not paying attention to what's right in front of their face. And that's the first priority. 100% the first priority is paying attention to what is right in front of your face and then building upon that. Okay, so if we're gonna talk about what's most important in that case, it's what's right in front of your face, what's right happening in your body, what's, what's really going on in that individual workout and then the next day, as opposed to saying, hey, over the last six months, you know, this has happened. Well, yeah, sometimes you'll miss some of the major details that contributed to what happened over the six months if you're not looking at the, you know, the moment for moment, right? So everything in your life happens in the moment. And then cumulative moments lead into, you know, the, the grander effect. But if you don't pay attention to the moments, how do you know which moments led to what? Right, that, that's really what I'm saying. So, so today, yeah, I'm gonna be doing some bench press. I'm gonna do some barbell curls. And I'm gonna do some uh, supinated chins, yeah, supinated pull-ups or whatever, and I'm gonna do everything wrong according to some, uh, you know, couch potato expert out there that has been training for two or three months and listened to some idiot on the internet with no muscular gains and, and no trophies. So yeah, that's the rewarding part of making videos. Motion. All right. I did bench presses yesterday. I did some uh, benches for 225 last night. Sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll do, like I said last workout, sometimes I'll do a workout two days in a row. Like just a one body part or something that I feel like I need to connect with. It sometimes helps my mind muscle connection the next day. And uh, as long as I don't do too much, right? So I do two or three sets. And then the next day, if I do the same, exercise then I find I have a greater capacity for strength or or sometimes you know just very mind muscle connection just my well-beingness during the exercise feels much better so a lot of times I'm looking for that honestly because you, you'll notice like after you get to a certain level of, of advancement in your natural bodybuilding that your reps don't always just go up. You don't perpetually just get stronger, right? Otherwise, every 50-year-old natural bodybuilder be lifting a thousand pounds. And you'll notice that it starts to plateau off a bit. So because of that, then you start to look at what can you improve? And that's a better strategy than looking at just your plateau and concentrating on that all the time. Like, it's good to say, okay, what else, what else can I improve? What can improve? And your experience of the exercise can always improve, right? like how it feels, uh, you know, the type of pump you get, the, the, the type of well-being or vitality you get from when you work out, right? I know these things seem like uh, unimportant concepts to the young dudes out there, but as soon as you injure yourself one time, you're gonna look at these things in a much, much greater light. You're gonna, you're gonna start saying, oh wow, that's what Jason was talking about. And I get people all the time. They come to this channel and they reject most of the shit I say, and then four years later, they come back and they say, hey Jason, uh, you know, I'm coming back to your channel, man. Uh, I really understand what you're saying now, you know? So the truth is, is most of the stuff I'm saying is too advanced for most beginners. 
and it's too advanced for most intermediate stuff. Uh, most intermediate natural bodybuilders don't get what I'm saying, and they just get triggered when I don't uh, resonate with exactly what they found to be true for themselves. So, in the end, whatever you find to be true, whatever's working is the truth, uh, but it can always evolve. You know, you always have to be open to that evolution, and that is one thing that will continue uh, throughout your entire training career. So let's go to 225 here. Just one set. That's the other thing you might find. When you only, when you train a, a exercise two days in a row, you may find that you don't need as many warm-up sets on the first uh, couple sets or whatever. Like, you know, the first day you do the exercise, you might need like a lot of sets to warm up. Then the next day, you'll notice that maybe you need, you know, one or two less warm-up sets just to get going into your work weight. So it's kind of interesting how that works. Now, if I start breathing hard, it's not just because I'm out of shape. <laughs> it's because there's no oxygen in the air right now uh, because there's so much smoke and stuff. So it's, uh, it's pretty brutal right now. That's all I can say outside. It's, uh, yeah, it, it, you can tell it does affect your breathing quite a bit. Pretty easy, huh? Mountain. So yeah, so about volume and intensity. Intensity, I'm gonna say, is much more important. And what I mean by that is that if you're going to do one or the other, right? Meaning you're gonna do like 15, 20 sets of something, but you're not gonna be able to manifest the intensity to go to failure because your resources are gonna obviously diminish after the first three to six sets, right? You're gonna have less glycogen, you're gonna notice your reps go way down. There is a point of diminishing return when it comes down to volume. What that is for you, I don't know. I don't agree with the one set method, the high intensity method. So many guys, they ask me questions and I just wish some of you guys are asking me questions like, please look through my library of videos. I've got over a thousand videos and I've got answers to most of the questions you're going to answer, uh, ask me so like go through my whole library and you're going to find what i think about this or that or whatever and i've probably done three four five ten videos on that subject so make sure you do that but what i'm going to say is that more isn't always better right even more when it comes down to weight it isn't always better because your technique may change or you might injure yourself because there's just too much tension on the muscles of the joints right and one thing i found is that because you're an anaerobic athlete you're trying to put stress on the muscle and you're trying to be intense but you're not trying to just break down all the tissue in the area just for the sake of breaking down tissue especially connective tissue and so forth and once you get past a certain point you're going to notice that uh you know you just don't recover and you're not necessarily getting any greater benefits so there is a perfect sort of storm of stimulation and that that's really one thing that a lot of you guys are probably trying to find and i usually find the critical drop-off point where i'll do a certain amount of sets with a certain exercise and then i'll notice like the reps will just cut down by 25 30 percent 40 percent from my first set and once i notice that happens then i know i'm pretty much done that exercise at least if not the body part altogether so that's kind of like a general rule of thumb that i've really followed and it served me pretty well because I've had a few people in the comments they talk about they're doing this many sets and then they cut down their sets and then they got more results. And then of course the logic comes to them they're like, oh, well, if less is more then I'm gonna just do one set. How about half a set? How about a quarter of a set? And then I'm gonna get more results. Well, obviously that doesn't work either, you know? So you have to find that, that happy medium. But once you start becoming an endurance athlete, you're no longer a bodybuilder. That's the whole point. So intensity plays a massive role in muscle growth and bodybuilding. And so, so it's not just an endurance sport. Uh, it's, it's very little endurance, actually. It's more strength endurance, but not endurance for the sake of endurance. Well, let's get ready to put some more weight on here.
I've said lots, uh, and I'll say it again, and I'll keep saying it, I'll probably be saying it 10 years from now, maybe 20 years from now, is that uh, this perfect training method does not exist. Right? And people keep on looking for the perfect method. You know, most likely because they're lazy motherfuckers, you know, or they're just so afraid, they're so insecure, they're so afraid of doing something wrong. And yeah, we all go through those stages when it comes down to putting out effort, right? Because effort is a certain level of investment. But the truth is, is that bodybuilding, in, in a lot of ways, is just the science of effort itself. Uh, yeah, I made that up. I made that up. You won't find it on Wikipedia. But the bottom line is that when you're training, as long as you're putting out effort and you're not getting injured, right? You feel like the muscles are hitting exhaustion, they're hitting failure, something is going to adapt. Something's going to ad adapt, right? And, and the truth is, is that people get mixed up with popularity and intelligence. And they think the two things are the same. They think that, oh, if I go back to the golden era where somebody was famous in the magazines in the 70s or the 80s, and depending on how famous they are, and, and they, they get launched into God status once they die, right? As soon as somebody dies, all of a sudden they become a God, right? Of course, if the person was talking to them in person, like I'm doing right now, right? Kind of. I'm on video. Uh, you probably wouldn't listen to those freaking people, you know? But once they get pushed into God status, then everybody starts to say, oh, well, this person knows this famous person, or that person knows this famous person. So what? That just means they were in the right neighborhood. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily right about training on all respects, right? So the truth is, is that effort, effort is the most important thing and not getting injured. And then from there, you know, obviously your nutrition and stuff, but you know, a centimeter this way or a centimeter that way is not going to make you into the best bodybuilder of all time. Effort will, consistent effort and intensity, that will more than a perfect technique, you know, you know, because what's going to happen is instinctually, as you continually put in this effort, your body will start to move you in a direction that naturally coincides with your goals. It's mastery. It's like you become a samurai of this stuff. You start to realize where's the most efficient way to slice that sword. But so often, people think they can read about this and then somehow, uh, you know, uh, leapfrog over the years in the trenches. And the years in the trenches are going to teach you something much different than all of this Google searching crap is, is, is you know, crazy. It's making people crazy, honestly. It's making people nuts. So they'll see somebody that's gotten gains and say, oh, what's their social media following or, or how many magazines were they in? Oh, that means they don't know anything because they don't have as much fame as somebody else, right? Or they didn't rub elbows with Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, all of a sudden that person can't know anything because Arnold was the greatest. No, Arnold was great, but he was also a drug bodybuilder. He wasn't a great natural bodybuilder. So the thing is, is that if you want to know how to be a great natural bodybuilder, then you need to continually bodybuild and do the experiment. And intensity is going to be key. It's not necessarily, you know, a few degrees to the left or a few degrees to the right that are going to make you into a perfect bodybuilder. And, and this obsession, this over obsession with the perfect rep is, uh, it's ruining more, more people's, you know, honestly, it's ruining people's bodies in a lot of ways. Because if you're doing the perfect rep for somebody else and it's not for you, then it'll just mess you up. That's just what happens. Now, for instance, a lot of people get caught up in whether you touch your chest with the bar on the bench press or whether you lock out on the top. But the truth is, from here to here, I find it's all just elbows and a rotator cuff. It's like overextending the arm. That's fine for punching, but it, it, this, from here to here, there's absolutely no extra chest. None. None for me. None at all, right? Now, if I'm doing dumbbells, one might be able to argue because I'm bringing the dumbbells in, depending on how big the dumbbells are. And I find a lot of the guys that are using the 50s and 60s will start to comment on how to lift the hundreds. And guess what? If you're not lifting the hundreds or 120s, you don't know how to lift them. You know, you can't really comment on it 
based on your experience with the 50s. It's different because the size of the dumbbell comes into play. So the point is, is that doesn't matter if I get like, like say I'm doing like not touching my chest on the bench, right? And I get a couple extra reps because that's all I get. I get one or two extra reps on the bench if I don't touch my chest. Say I'm starting fresh, right? If I start right now, I probably would get around the same amount of reps or something. But if I don't touch my chest, it, it, it just is a different way of distributing the intensity, but it's not necessarily the wrong way. And that, that's where people get so caught. I find they get so caught in that, you know? Uh, because what happens is that they're measuring their own achievements in life based on what they're watching, not understanding that I'm not ego lifting. I'm not lifting to, to please your ego or to please my own ego. I'm lifting based on what feels right for my body. Just because that's triggering the insecure dudes out there, that has nothing to do with why I'm doing what I'm doing, right? And the truth is, is that I'm not getting that much extra reps out of it, right? It's not like I'm going up by like, you know, 10 extra reps and doubling the set reps, you know, in a workout. But what I am doing is taking some of the stress off, some of the tendons and stuff that, that I feel on the bottom. Because like you guys know, from my hockey injury, I have a shoulder. Uh, my right shoulder is pushed forward a little bit because of the dislocation and stuff. So that throws off a little bit of the dynamics uh, of, of how I bench and stuff. So that's why you'll see me adjust on the bench from time to time, just to make sure my shoulder blades are intact. Because it's just, there's a different dynamic going on, right? Uh, it's not like before I dislocated my shoulder where everything felt like it was totally linear and balanced. Now it's like the actual structure is different in the body. And yeah, I have to compensate for that accordingly. But either way, as long as you're managing intensity, regardless of whether you're touching your chest or not, uh, you're going to get some results, you know? And then you look at how your body develops, and then from there, you can make some changes in order to establish a different result or whatever. Let's say you're not getting chest development, well, then maybe you need to throw in some flies, or maybe it's a different type of tension, like constant tension type flies on a, on a pec deck machine or something. You know, not a pec deck specifically, but more the lateral. Uh, you know, the reverse lateral machine, I like that one better if I'm going to do any sort of fly type movement. Uh, maybe it's elastic bands, maybe it's a different type of tension, a variable tension or something like elastic bands and stuff. So, you know, you got to mess around with that stuff, but destroying your joints, you know, or overextending something that doesn't feel quite right, uh, that's not going to help you. In the long run, that's just going to diminish your gains and your results. And yeah, you might get more applause on the internet, but it's not necessarily going to help you. So, you know, where are these people that are giving you applause when you have to get shoulder surgery? You know what I mean? Like none of them give a shit. So why please them now? You know what I mean? So in this set, I'm not going to touch my chest with a bar. And to tell you the truth, it does feel a little bit better doing this. You know, if I go lighter and not and touch my chest, it's okay. But once I go a bit heavier, I find it's just that little like half an inch or something that's it doesn't really add anything extra except for stretching out my joints too much, you know, so... That's good. I like that. See? So it's different. I wouldn't say that that's easier. It's just uh, not as stressful on the joints. But if anything, I find there's a certain part that's actually harder. That's the thing. Sometimes just the constant tension makes it more intense on an area you want to hit. So less range of motion isn't always easier, which is a standard fallacy that's perpetuated out there, right? Now this is something that's kind of uh, a good thing to talk about too because you'll notice I just did three sets of bench. I did one set of 225 which is more warm up and then I went into three sets of 275. So yesterday I did about three sets of 225 on the bench to failure and then today I did you know three sets. So say a person does six sets in a workout. There's going to be a certain feeling from that. But if you do three sets one day and then three sets the next day, there's a different feeling from that right and one could say it's exactly the same volume over two days but you have a totally different experience and this is my freaking point people like to measure volume through the week but the way you distribute that volume makes a massive difference in how you experience the muscles and the strength and the groove and the pumps like everything so 
it's not just about weekly volume. This this whole oversimplification of bodybuilding concepts is what's ruining people. Like they're just getting brainwashed and programmed into ways of seeing things. And, I, and honestly, I'm, I'm saying you're better off having it all wiped clean and then approaching this stuff like a beginner in a, in a lot of cases, you know? I think there's some general rules that would apply that are good to know, but, but honestly, I'd rather people start with a foundation of an open mind because as somebody told me a long time ago, you know, an open mind is like a parachute. If it doesn't open, it doesn't work very good, you know? So that's kind of the thing. So that's the end of this portion of the workout. I'm going to uh, be uploading a biceps part because I do some biceps training. So I will be uploading another video on bicep training and that's the next part of my workout here. But I thought I'd cut it short because it's about 20 minutes long already. So hey, thanks a lot for watching guys. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalgolandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the page supporters. You can see them in the top left corner there. And yeah, if you want to tune into the podcast, I have a podcast every week on my Patreon page and the link is in the description. Motor.